Now on to our top story today. The man subject to a nationwide manhunt following the chemical attack in Clapham yesterday was convicted of a sex offence in 2018 before being granted asylum. Abdul Azidi has been named as a suspect and remains on the run. He was last seen in a Tesco store in North London yesterday with significant facial injuries. Well, joining us now is the former Met police detective Peter Kirkham. Uh, Peter... A man who is suspected of uh, conducting this hideous attack in Clapham on Wednesday night, but now appears to have disappeared, the last sighting of him uh, being in North London uh, late on Wednesday night. What does the manhunt now look like? And how, in a city like London, does someone just disappear? Um because it's London, it's sort of why you can easily disappear as well as being rather surprising that someone can. Um, there's lots of people to hide amongst, basically. Um, as for the actual manhunt, um, the police will be methodically following up all their possible lines of inquiry uh, in relation to uh, Mr. Zaidi, um, any contacts they know of, any previous addresses, uh, Anything they have, they'll be following up on, and they'll also be trying to do something um, in relation to current uh, information, maybe from mobile phones or use of cash cards or any of the numerous other ways that we all leave a footprint uh, wherever we go these days. And when you look at the, the, the pictures there, Peter, I mean, clearly this is a man who will be very obviously recognised, given the scarring on his face that we've seen from those photographs. Also, you mentioned London. We are the most surveilled society, I believe, on the planet. We have more cameras here per square mile than any other capital city. So really, just to reiterate Sarah's point, given that, doorbells, all the video footage available, I assume the police are actually bringing that all together and, and tracking his last movements uh, the police can only do that when they've got some idea where he might be uh, they'll obviously be doing it from the scene of the attack in clapham uh, they'll obviously be doing it around the uh, tesco store in north london where he was seen uh, and, and anywhere else that they've got uh, grounds to believe he was um, but there's a limit to how much cctv you can uh, gather uh, and there's certainly um, a limit on how much CCTV you can watch. Uh, it's not uh, it's not something that's easy to do or quick to do, put it that way, um, because um, you've got to find the equipment, you've got to have officers, you've got to give them a break every few minutes, um, you know, maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes in every hour uh, to remain alert. So it's not a case of the CCTV that we have in the country is monitored 24 seven, very few cap CCTV cameras at all, even public space CCTV, uh, very few of them are monitored 24 uh, seven in detail. Uh, so it'll be focused on where they know he might have been. I mean, what about technology, facial recognition uh, technology? Because we know he left his car in Clapham. He's got to have got to North London somehow, potentially by public transport, we don't know. Uh, you know the window in which he was making that journey between the last sighting in Clapham and then being seen in North London. Is there no kind of technology that could then pinpoint through what images they've already got, try and search that way? Uh, there, there isn't really. Um, it, it's as uh, quick and re reliable these days to uh, be watching CCTV with a person rather than with... Um, a facial recognition So it is technology. literally going through minute He's by minute. It's getting better, but it's not perfect by any means. It's quite good if you've someone in a fixed position in relation to the camera. Mm. So someone walking down a corridor or something like that towards a fixed camera, uh, it, it's quite good. Uh, it's far less good when you've got a messy situation with people pointing in all sorts of directions with all sorts of obscuring uh, going on by other people. Well, or, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about yeah. London to potentially having travelled to Newcastle. Mm. Uh, so we're talking about a vast area uh, now, aren't we? Yeah.
Can I just ask? Can I just ask you, in terms of uh, of the sense of public outrage, and I think people waking up this morning will be absolutely livid at what is going on. We know this gentleman came in from Afghanistan. We believe he came on the back of a lorry. He then had this sex offence. What in 2018 he applied for asylum. It was turned down twice. It wasn't until he converted to Christianity he was then allowed to stay in this country. Just that sense of outrage and people coming together as communities. Are you hopeful that the great British public will? come together with information that means this man will be caught and caught quickly? Uh, I, I'm absolutely sure they will. Uh, he, he's got a real difficulty now in that he's got this major injury to his face. Uh, if he covers it up, that will in itself bring him to, uh, to notice of the public. Um, I, I suspect as soon as he pops his head above the parapet, um, he'll be spotted by somebody and the police will be called and hopefully they'll get there in time to, to grab him before he disappears again. Um, his only hope would be to stay hidden away and that would rely on having um, a, bit, a network of people to, uh, to support him in that and I very much suspect he hasn't got that arranged. Peter, very good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Peter Kirkham there.